Race three of the weekend for the Quave Radical Club Cup. And Colin Miller with two race wins already this weekend is the man on pole position. And Darren Luke, who has had two class wins this weekend. Indeed, he has been unbeaten all season within his class in the championship lines up alongside on the front of the grid. The second row, you'll find Richard Stables in the predominantly black car. And then lining up alongside is Richard Carver. This race is going to be 15 minutes for the four different classes of car that we have. We'll account for those in a moment or two as the field is ready. You'll find a gap on the third row. Gary Baxter electing to start from the very back of the grid for this race, potentially with a gear or clutch problem. So he's going to keep out of the mix and start at the back. 15 minutes of race about to get underway everybody then is on the grid the lights go out the race underway now and it's a good getaway by Colin Miller but not as good as Darren Luke who storms around the outside of him on the way down towards Hatchet's Hairpin for the first time and so Darren Luke it is who will lead the way Colin Miller slotting in behind him in second place there the two from the front row of the grid but now in this reverse order Darren Luke is ahead of Colin Miller as they accelerate their way for the first time now up through Spitfires and then into this long sweeping left hander at Benny Bend Richard Stables running in third place at the moment then as the car Power their way up towards the centre S's and Darren Luke having made that really good start getting away a bit now from Colin Miller heading towards the Brooklyn's hairpin for the first time and Darren Luke knows that he's got to do the hard work on this opening lap and try to build up an advantage as Paul Marsham goes through there in the Gulf livery car but up front it's Darren Luke who leads the way second place man is Colin Miller as they sprint down towards the end of lap number one and riding now with Rachel Davis who was a retirement in one of the races yesterday and it's a pretty busy road ahead of her as she sprints down towards that right hand kink now going into Woodlands then down towards on the curve of place gained on the inside them this one of the quicker cars it's one of the SR3 class cars and Rachel Davis then now swings her way onto the pit straight but the leader goes through then it's Darren Luke ahead by 0.9 of a second from Colin Miller and Mark Boot going really well now in third he retired from the first race yesterday but he managed to get a decent result to be fifth in race two and now there he is second in his class behind Darren Luke the class structure is such that you have the SR3s the 1500 cc Suzuki Hayabusa engine cars but I'm afraid at Hatchet's Hairpin you've got people doing odd things one of whom looks like being Paul Marsham the Gulf livery car rejoins there was another one that he held up rather badly in the middle of all of that so he gets himself going now number 39 Paul Marsham being one of the Supersport SR3 drivers. You've got the Pro Sport class for the PR6s with their 1340cc Suzuki Hayabusa engines. You've got the Club Sports, the original 1100cc Kawasaki engine cars, and the Invitation class, which runs for the non standard Powertech engines. This, though, Rachel Davis's view, there's another place to be gained here, potentially trying to sprint up the inside. This is a really brave effort into the right hand kink at Woodland. She's gone through, I think, yes, up on the inside, then. So she goes through ahead of Stephen Lindsay. And that's going to put Rachel Davis now up into eighth place. The gap, though, between the two race leaders, look, he's coming down after his rather sluggish start. Colin Miller, former Northern Ireland Formula Libra champion, now is on the tail of Darren Luke. He did the best lap of the race so far last time through. And now the gap has come right down between first and second. Darren Luke, somebody with experience of the 750 Motor Club Bike Sports Championship before switching last year to Radicals. He was third in his class in the championship last season man who runs a tour hire company leading the way at the moment but by a pretty modest margin Colin Miller still chasing on after him then the man who comes from County Antrim is there in second place but has just lost a little bit of time in the middle part of this lap I would suggest in third place is Mark Boot and then in fourth place now number 95 which is the hotelier Richard Stables this once again is Rachel Davis's view she accelerates this very very fast part of the circuit through Woodlands down to Honda Curve and then across the start and finish line and with all of the momentum, all of the speed building here, it's across the line where you get to the fastest part of Pembroke. Through on the curve, accelerating now up towards the line. Clear road ahead of her. The person that she's chasing now is in fact number 15, and that is the car in the hands of Richard Carver. But that particular radical is a further six seconds up the road, so she's got a lot of work to do yet to get onto terms with the next group of cars. There is Mark Boot in third place. Ahead of him is Colin Miller, who certainly did lose out last time by about half a second. And so there, now the leader, Darren Luke, is currently nine tenths of a second to the good. Turns his way out of the Brooklyn's hairpin. Colin Miller still chasing on after him. And Mark Booth is third in turn. Clear, I think, of Richard Stables. There he is in fourth position. Richard Stables, the Ross-based hotelier. Heads down towards that kink at Woodlands, down then onto on the curve. Colin Miller, incidentally, a somewhat dominant class leader at the moment. Second overall, but he leads the Supersport class from Richard Carver. And then third in the class is this car. Rachel Davis still hard at work and striving to get onto terms with Richard Carver for fifth place. The gap between the leaders continues to extend. The gap between third and fourth, though, comes down again. And this, remember, is for second and third within the Pro Sport class. The 1340cc Suzuki Hayabusa engine cars, the PR6 model, and 95 is Richard Stables. Ahead of him is Mark Boot. And last time around, Richard Stables was fractionally quicker. But the gap is coming down a little, not by huge chunks lap after lap, but it is coming down a little. 
It's a 15-minute race. This is the third of four of the weekend at the Quaife Radical Club Cup. Single driver race, whereas alternative radical championships have mandatory pit stops and they're provision for two drivers, but this is very much just down to one man to do all the work. Uh, Richard Stables there is in fourth place and working hard to get onto the tail of Mark Poop now as they come through Woodlands once again down to Honda Curve. Pembrey in its 20th anniversary year playing host to the Dunlop Great and British Motorsport Festival series for this weekend and as across the line goes Darren Luke he's a second and a half clear of Colin Miller who that time lapped fractionally faster this is for third and the gap's down to half a second as they come over the line and into the very tight right hand hatchet's hairpin Mark Boot possibly going a little bit wide there that time is that going to give Richard Stables a run now as they work their way up through Spitfires then through Diveni Bend Richard Stables hard at work as Darren Luke in the meantime the race leader comes now from the Senna S's up towards the Brooklyn's hairpin He's taken seven overall wins, but as far as his class is concerned, he's been unbeaten this year. He's had a really good season, and you can see why, can't you, the way now that even though he was second on the grid, he made that great start and has kept Colin Miller at bay race long. And yesterday, certainly, Colin Miller looked the stronger of the two. Now, he's finding life very hard indeed to get onto terms with Darren Luke. The third place, though, they're almost together, and this is Rachel Davis, hard at work still. She's in sixth place overall. Last time she did a personal best lap and was a second a lap faster than the man she's chasing, Richard Carver. So Rachel Davis now, I think, is going to be a real threat to him in the remaining nine minutes of the race. Comes out upon the curve. You'll see the pit buildings in a moment, past the race control building. There it is. Past the Dunlop area in the pit lane and then down to the braking zone for the hatchets happen. Mark Boot still third, but importantly for him, second in class. So he's going to score points out of all of this and then he's got Richard Stables chasing on after him as they go now through the centre S's, that's the race leader. Darren Luke looking so, so strong up front at the moment. The man from Hanbury, heading Colin Miller, the man of the member that's leading the Supersport class at the moment for the 1500cc Radical SR3 models. And then the smaller engine, PR6, smaller engine, but a bit lighter. And Mark Boot there in third place overall, ahead of Richard Sabres in fourth, as Darren Luke now turns his way out upon the curve, up over the line once again. Now, can Colin Miller do anything about fighting back as they come through? Yes, he can! Colin Miller there in second place has just done the best lap of the race now. That means that he's brought the gap down to just a Nats wants it over a second. And a little bit of opposite lock needed from Darren Luke going out of Hatchet's Hairpin means now that he's going to have to really work hard and he's feeling the pressure. So the gap down, one second, that's all there is between them. And Colin Miller now maybe, I just wonder, perhaps has been biding his time about all of this. We're just about at half distance out of the 15 minutes for this race. And so now is this the time at which Colin Miller starts to up his pace and start to give a much more energetic chase to the leader, Darren Luke. We'll see whether that was a one-lap fluke or whether it's going to be the pattern. Because in two corners time, they'll break the timing beam at the end of lap number eight. Darren Luke leading the way, Colin Miller chasing after him, the PR6 ahead of the SR3, and of course they've got traffic ahead of them. The first car that they're going to negotiate, I think it's going to be number 72, which is the racing newcomer, Danny Hubbard. It's his first ever event, never mind first season, he's done nothing at all apart from track days, so going pretty well, keeping out of the way, learning all the time, there he is, number 72, Danny Hubbard, gets out of the way of the leader, oh, and then has to turn into the corner, and that compromises Colin Miller, I don't think there was anything deliberate in that, but it's going to really hurt Colin all the way through this next section, finds a gap, goes up on the inside now, but really Danny Hubbard had to turn into the corner sooner or later, and then it's a narrow section, so that's not helped Colin Miller one bit, but I'm not sure there was anything really that... Danny Hubbard could have done to keep out of the way at that part of the circuit. Just really bad timing, That's really unfortunate for Miller. Great news for Darren Luke, though, look, because now that gap that was hovering around about a second, I would propose, is much greater this time. Six and three quarter minutes of the race remaining. There, 22, is the car in the hands of Gary Baxter. Now, he should have been on the third row of the grid. He elected to start at the very back. He pitted at the end of the first warming up lap and so uh, joined in right at the very back. He's got himself into the top 10 and now indeed is up into ninth place because he's just worked his way past Paul Marsham, who you'll remember had a spin at Hatchets early on in the race and they are both within the SR3 class, albeit a fair way back. But under normal circumstances, Gary Baxter should be a front runner given that he was well placed in yesterday's event. The build-up for a motorbike race at Gary Baxter, he's raced on 250cc machines, he's raced on 600cc bikes, and the next target for him is going to be 27, Ray Woolhead, in the 360 racing car, who is just up ahead of him, look as they come across the line, Ray Woolhead then now comes across the line in eighth, up into ninth is Gary Baxter, and the gap is eight tenths of a second between them, so this is going to change, isn't it, possibly, by the end of the next lap even. The 360 racing team, very successful in 
assorted radical championships, very successful, for example, in the European Masters that supports the Le Mans series with the efforts of Ross Kaiser and Terence Woodward, for example. And there you can see 22, Gary Baxter still storming along in ninth place, but he's right on the tail now of Ray Woolhead. So the Holmfirth company director is really going to have to make this car wide now. It's a battle for class position. It is a battle for eighth place overall as well. And Gary Baxter eyes up the inside there, going to the Brooklyn's hairpin. But he can't make it stick, can't really find the room. What about coming out of the corner? Again, he's close, but he's not able to find a gap. And you can see the way that Ray Woolhead has to defend. He moves across to defend. He's also got to make sure he gets the right line coming now through the kink, which he does. Out of Woodlands, down towards on the curve. over the start and finish line. It's not quite changed in the space of that, but it may, may well change now. Look, coming down towards on the curve to the inside. Goes Baxter, couldn't make that one work. Goes to the outside, wide in, equals tight out. Is it going to work? No, he's going to try to drive all the way around the outside. He gets a bit crossed up under braking and ends up having to slot back in behind. Ray Wallhead said he remains knife, Gary Baxter, for the moment. Less than five minutes of the race to go, and all of a sudden, this becoming the best battle on trackers. Now surging up the inside there. 22, Gary Baxter is going to gain the place surely this time. Yes, he goes through used to motorbike engines, of course, from his early days of bike racing. Now in the bike engine sports cars, he goes through. And Ray Wallhead loses another place. The recovering Paul Marsham goes through as well on the inside. So Ray Wallhead was eighth. He's now down to tenth. The gap in the meantime between the race leaders has been steadily extending. It's up now to over 2.6 seconds and a spin there, I'm afraid, for Mark Boot at the Hatchet's hairpin. Rejoins very, very quickly indeed, but he will have lost third place now to Richard Stables. The two of them were squabbling as they went into the corner, and the net result, Mark Boot's car swapped ends. He's back in the race, but somewhat frustrated. He's lost a place overall, he's lost a place in class as well. The race leaders into the last four minutes now. There is Mark Boot working his way up towards us, and behind him is number 15, Richard Carver. So fourth and fifth, Boot in the black car, Carver in the white, SR3 behind him. There he is, swinging out of the Brooklyn's hairpin now. So can Mark Boot recover? I don't think he's going to catch Richard Stables for third overall, but can he hang on to fourth is the next question. Down towards Honda Curve they come. The gap between the race leaders is extending all the time with three and a half minutes on the clock, but now Spinner Boot comes across the line. Richard Stables easily through in third place. Mark Boot cost himself around about three and a half seconds because of that spin at this corner. A lap ago at the Hatchets Hairpin. So Mark Boot sets the car up, turns right, took the sprint past the traffic as well. He got one of the original radicals there, the 1100cc Kawasaki engine club sport just up ahead of him. And the car now does get out of the way. So Graham Ridgeway in the club sport lets the quicker PR6 go through. Radical, a company that was founded in the late 1990s by Mick Hyde and Phil Abbott, who were both experienced sports car racers. They were racing in road sports at the time with the 750 Motor Club, and they both wanted something that was very quick, very affordable, and easy to maintain, and a category didn't really exist, so they thought, I know, we'll create one. And so Phil Abbott, the engineer, came up with the car. Mick Hyde, as a marketing expert, did all the marketing and promotion of the championship, and it began as a class within a different category for the 750 Motor Club, and by 1999, it was able to stand on its own two feet, and Radical has become hugely successful ever since with cars for the clubman, and indeed cars competing in the normal 24 hours. So from humble beginnings, it's now a very, very successful race car constructor, and Radicals raced every weekend all around the world these days. Rachel Davis in trouble at the Hatchets hairpin, it's all gone horribly quiet, finds a gear eventually, picks up speed, gets it, gets it round the corner all right, but that for a moment was all a bit concerning for Rachel. We've got just over two minutes of the race to go, she's worked her way up into a good sixth place, but struggling to find a gear and get the car slowed down going into the hairpin there. Really fast part of the circuit, though, this out of Di Benny Bend and up through the center S's. A lift, go right along the short straight and then break for the Brooklyn's hairpin. The race leader comes across the line, then Darren Luke has got a minute and three quarters to go. And all of a sudden, Colin Miller has speeded up behind him. He's just done another fastest lap of the race. So when the road is clear ahead of him, Colin really is able to go storming along. Admittedly, he's only 64 thousandths of a second quicker over that lap than the race leader, but it all helps. It does draw him closer to this man. And so Darren Luke, it is, that is still leading the way. We've got a minute and a half on the clock. Unless the race gets the flag early, then I think it's going to be another lap at the end of this for Darren Luke, the race leader. And he really has stamped his mark on this. A great start. And ever since then, he has just been uncatchable. Comes out of the Brooklyn's hairpin. Speed building now. Accelerating through this fast right-hand kink of Woodlands. In the car, it feels like a very definite corner, but on the circuit map, it's a kink and then a proper corner on the curve at the end of the lap. Accelerate up towards the start and finish line. We're going to be under a minute to go as he comes now up towards the line. 
so he'll squeeze one more lap out of the race. Indeed, there is the last lap board for him. Colin Miller is 2.7 seconds back. In other words, he's a bit slower that time through, so this rather elasticated gap once again goes out in favour of the leader. We've got now 40 seconds of the race remaining. It'll be a chequered flag this time. It will be an eighth overall win of the season for Darren Luke, and it's going to be maintaining, of course, this 100% record within his class, the pro sport class within the championship, and that is very commendable indeed. But you can see how far ahead he is of the class opposition now, with Richard Stables being second in the category and Mark Booth third, and, of course, Mark delaying himself with his spin earlier on. Darren Luke now then accelerates out of the Brooklyn's hairpin, towards Woodlands, towards Honda Curve, and the former 750 Motor Club Bike Sports engine sports car race start. Turns out of the right-hander of Honda Curve for his eighth race win of the season. It's going to be a victory at Pembrey then for Darren Luke, who accelerates now up towards the chequered flag. Darren Luke takes the race win in this third of four races this weekend here for the Quaid Radical Club Cup. Second across the line is Colin Miller. And who's going to be third? It should be Richard Stables. And he's a long way back for his third place, but he should be through in a moment as Darren Luke celebrates a race win. And that was an absolutely faultless performance. A great start, and that's really what helped him to that race win because Colin Miller really seemed to be a bit outside by that and was never able to get back onto terms. Rachel Davis still charging on. That's traffic ahead rather than a battle for place, but she comes across the line to finish in sixth place. And they are the top two of the race, indeed the top two of the weekend. Darren Luke in the PR6, the race winner. And Colin Miller, having had two wins yesterday, looking so strong across those two races, just not able to do anything at all in that race about Darren Luke. So Colin will go away and have a bit of a head scratch, and I think, ready for race four, which will be towards the end of the afternoon here at Pembrey. But Darren Luke, for the moment, celebrating a race win and a class win, of course, as well. Colin Miller, a class winner. Seventh overall is where Stephen Lindsay finished as the invitation class winner, running a 1500cc engine in his uh, PR6, which is not standard, and then that's why he goes into the invitation class. And the club sport class, the original Radicals, won for the second time this weekend by Simon Garmston, another very experienced Radical racer. That's how the top six came across the line. Darren Luke, the race winner, by two seconds from Colin Miller. Richard Stables back third, and Richard Carver fourth after his spin. Mark Boot, I'm afraid, got kicked into touchdown in fifth. And sixth was Rachel Davis, who battled her way into the top six after having to do lots of overtaking in the early part of the race. As Darren Luke scores victory in race three here for the Radicals at Pembrey. many congratulations that's your eighth race win and you had like a two second lead over Colin yeah that's incredible to be honest I think the uh, extra bowl of sugar puffs this morning made all the difference <laughs> but uh, I mean we've been struggling all weekend relative to these SR3s but I got a good start a few good laps and I thought blimey there's a bit of a gap I just, uh, just drove that like qualifying pace the whole way so I'm not looking forward to seeing the state of the tyres afterwards, but uh, no, really pleased to do that anyway, so good day. Clearly, so. clearly the, the sort of balance of the car felt really good on the circuit to be able to achieve that, that lead. Uh, only with a bit of left foot braking while on the throttle at the same time, get the front end in a few corners, just struggling with understeer, whereas these seem to be a bit more glued at the front, but uh, no, it's 
hard work, but very, very worthwhile. So. Clearly you're relishing it then, because you've made it look so easy. I don't know about that, not from where I was driving it wasn't. <laughs> it was very difficult. I don't think I can do it again, but anyway, we'll see. Well, there's another one to come. Yeah, probably a can of Red Bull or something later, I'll give it a go. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Welcome back to Pembroke. We're here for the Dunlop Great and British Festival. It is the fourth of seven of these race meetings over the course of the season, and the Great British Package making a return to South Wales. This Pembroke's 20th anniversary race meeting and the final of four races in the Quaife Radical Club Cup about to get underway, with the man on pole position for this race being Darren Luke, who scored victory in race three of the weekend. The grid is based on the finishing positions of the earlier race. And so Darren Luke lines up on pole with Colin Miller, with him at the front of the grid. Now there is uh, Darren Luke in the foreground who has won his class every time out. That means he's had 11 class wins this year. Colin Miller lining up with him who has had seven class wins, three overall wins to the eight overall wins of Darren Luke. Beats very much the top two drivers in the championship this year. And we are about to have the cars released then onto the final warming up lap. The Radical Club Cup running with four classes of car. And that is the SR3 of Rachel Davis that you're looking at. Rachel ready for action then with 20 minutes ahead of her for this race. The Supersport class runs for the SR3s, 1500 cc engines, the Suzuki Hayabusa power unit. You've got the Pro Sport class, the PR6 uh, radical model with a 1340 cc Suzuki Hayabusa engine. The Invitation class is for cars that run non-standard Powertech engines. And the Club Sport class is for the original radical, the 1100 cc uh, Kawasaki engine car. And there are two of those out on track as well. We've lost one and two after a number of accidents over the course of the weekend with qualifying and three races already. But the survivors are set to do battle. 20 minutes and Darren Luke and Colin Miller really have made the class their own this year. Green flag about to be waved and then the cars are going to be released. This is David Anderson and Ben Constanduras here at Pembroke. And these drivers at least get a bit of fresh air, Ben. But these cars around here still pretty hard to uh, uh, get the optimum out of and I don't know you've described them as looking like mini Le Mans cars that means they've got downforce that means they're pretty physical to drive uh, yes exactly the downforce is, is the major issue especially around here where you've got lots of fast corners green with the flag and uh, warming up lap to get uh, some temperature into the brakes and tyres as if they need it it's so hot out there today and uh, it's funny because the last time they did four races was at Snetterton uh, two two meetings ago they had four races and it was just as hot really, yeah. uh, and really really sweltering conditions and, and it's not just about the cars it's these poor drivers a lot of these guys are gentlemen drivers they're not at the peak of their fitness and uh, it really is going to take a lot out of them um, and ladies as well Rachel Davis uh, on board they're weaving left and right trying to get temperature in the front and rear tires not too much wheel spin because if you wheel spin you warm up over the rear tires that drive these cars and they're sponsored by Cardiff University here just going around the left hand and 19 years old she actually lives uh, in the Cotswolds rather than in Wales and just starting university has been racing and with, his, with her father actually in Radicals for a few years now and uh, moving into the Club Cup uh, there is of course the UK Cup they're not here this weekend they're actually the European Championships racing at the Nürburgring hence why uh, there's lots of people who do both championships and that's also why um, this, this grid is a little bit smaller actually normally it's massive um, than, uh, than usual uh, so looking at another view, three views on Rachel Davis's car at the back wing. And hopefully we won't have no one behind there. So it will just be Rachel trying desperately to go to the front of the field. The final race of the weekend for the Radical Club Cup, about to get underway. You're looking there at one of the original Radicals, the club sports with Simon Garmston at the wheel of it. And Simon's had two class wins over the course of the weekend. Somebody that raced in the original uh, double driver enduro championship, the Radical by Duro championship a few seasons ago. And the man from Rygate, hugely experienced in Radical racing. But it's going to be Darren Loop then on pole position. The man from Hanbury who went very well in the 750 Motor Club uh, Bike Sports Engine Sports Car Series a couple of years back, switched to Radicals last season, and is, as I say, unbeaten in the Pro Sport class, the PR6 class this year. So it's a one-by-one -one staggered grid. That's what the track licence decrees at Pembroke for every standing start. And the cars slot into place now. There is the Tulha company director, Darren Luke, at the very front, and Colin Miller, the man from County Antrim, who was the 
Northern Ireland Formula Libra Championship three years ago with him at the front of the grid. This is the view from on board with Rachel Davis where the five second board is about to be shown. The drivers then will look up towards the lighting gantry. And so 20 minutes of this final radical race of the weekend gets underway. Now the lights go out, away they go. Who makes the best start then? Colin Miller gets away well, so does Darren Luke. This is Rachel Davis's view, desperately looking for a gap on the way down to the hairpin. Goes to the outside there, against number 15, Richard Carver's car. Rachel breaks for the hairpin, Carver dives up the inside, gains two places under braking. Coming out of the corner then, the leader is Darren Luke, Colin Miller is second, and that another very good start. As we saw in race three of the weekend from Darren Luke, and having hit the front, can he now do what he did in the earlier race, and that is to control the race from the lead. Yeah, the two cars actually very different characteristics, the two different classes. Colin Miller very, very fast indeed, uh, but Darren Luke is just a, a little bit better through corners. It's Miller's car that is faster down the straights, and that uh, creates this uh, seesaw effect where sometimes uh, the car is uh, pulling away and other times he's further back. Rachel Davis there, our onboard camera, just jeopardised slightly by the frantic battling that was going on ahead of them. So they've got four cars, then a gap, and then two white cars, I think, going side by side there in the background. Now there's Colin Miller, number one, who leads the Super Sport class in his SR3. This is on board with Rachel Davis, coming now through Honda Curve, up over the line. And as she accelerates down towards the hatchet's hairpin, the car that she's chasing after is number 59, Stephen Lindsay's PR6 that runs with a non-standard 1500cc engine. But now Colin Miller doing what he was not able to do in the earlier race today, and that is take the battle to the leader, Darren Luke. Yesterday, Colin Miller won both races and he won them with ease. But now, even though he's down in second place, he is really taking the final to Darren Luke. Takes a tighter line there from the Benny Bend into the Senna S's, and he's giving Darren Luke a real work over. Darren Luke's car gets sideways. Colin Miller tries to get an SR3 size gap, and he does so. Hurls himself up the inside. Through he goes. Now, is he going to run out wide? Not too much. Rides the curb there, but that move works. It gives him the lead, and it started three corners back. Yeah, just a little mistake by the looks of it from Darren Luke. Just lost the rear end momentarily. Caught it very well, but it was just enough momentum to lose to allow Colin Miller up the inside. Now, Luke's going to go switch from defense to attack. Straight away, though, now Colin Miller having hit the front. He's pulling away, isn't he? As they come over the line, Darren Luke down in second place, and the gap is widening. Miller, of course, has just done the best lap of the race, the first flying lap anybody has done. He comes out of the hairpin, and now he wants to do what he did yesterday, and that is to just drive off into the distance. But really weird that he's able to do it now, whereas in the earlier race, he never got close enough, did he, to threaten Darren Luke whatsoever? No, it's true, and uh, sometimes races happen like that. Sometimes uh, Colin Miller is absolutely mighty, and no one can touch him, and other times, Darren Luke, who's the mighty one, and in fact, both of them dominating their classes, as we've heard. But it all depends really on the, on the circuit and the preservation of tyres as well. It's another thing. All the way through this uh, championship, obviously sponsored by Dunlop, they all have to preserve their tyres. And uh, Colin Miller may have done it slightly better than Darren Luke in this particular race behind them is uh, Boot and Stables. So actually yeah, a good class battle there. Uh, Luke, Boot and Stables all in the same class. That's right, all in the PR6s, the Pro Sport. As the leaders come then over the timing line, that puts three laps in the book now. Colin Miller stretching the advantage to a second and a half. And there you can see number 26, Mark Boot, who had a spin here at this corner. The hatchet's hairpin in the earlier race today, fending off Richard Stables. And there you've got number one, that is Colin Miller. Now second and a half to the good as he turns his way from Benny Bend into the Senna S's. And as I say, therefore, he's pulling away from Darren Luke in second place. But importantly for Darren, he still leads his class in which he has yet to be beaten this year. Mark Boot, however, not yet closing on him. The second in the class, Richard Stables still there in third. But Colin Miller, who has adapted to the UK circuit very effectively, having done most of his racing in Northern and Southern Ireland, comes now down through Woodlands towards the completion of lap number four. And this goes back to what we had yesterday. Miller in the lead, Miller pulling away, Miller looking set for a victory. Yeah, Colin Miller's uh, nearest uh, rival in club is uh, in, uh, in class, sorry, is Rachel Davis. She's down in sixth spot, and as they come across the line, she's going to be about, uh, I think, four seconds, five seconds, no, even more back. So in terms of class, uh, it's uh, looking really set. But, you know, we've got a long race, 15 minutes still remaining, and uh, who knows what might happen. Uh, very true. You've just seen the Gulf livery in SR3 there, going through on the inside, Paul Marsham moving himself up ahead of David Franklin's car. David with his PR6, running again with a 1500cc engine, whereas they are designed for a 1340cc engine. Hence, he runs in the invitation class, which is for the non-standard uh, radicals. Uh, that is the SR3 of Paul Marsham, which was another car that had uh, a drama or two in the earlier race, but going better now. He's into the top 10, and the next target for him, in fact, you can see it ahead, number 27 is Ray Woolhead there in the 360 racing run car. Just put a lap on number 13, Simon Garmston, in the original Radical, the club sport, which goes back to the late 1990s. That's been in the pits, incidentally. That's why it's running out of sequence. 
next car through is going to be David Franklin. There he is, number 91, a rather distant second within the invitation class now. Yes, it's uh, Lindsay in fifth spot ahead of um, Rachel Davis, actually, who's uh, the only other person in that particular class. In fact, he's, he's won a few um, class victories and some comfortable class victories in earlier races this season, but uh, struggling in this race, potentially got caught up in something earlier on. That's Paul Marsham, first year of racing this for Paul, the engineer, who comes from Ely. And ahead of him, he finds a spinner, and that is Ray Woolhead, who just about gets out of everybody's way. But that, for a moment, made the track even narrower there. He sorts himself out, and the noise driver rejoins, accelerates away from Hatchet's hairpin now, up towards Spitfires. This is Rachel Davis's view. Now, Rachel is still in sixth place. Last time, she did a personal best lap, but she's still not lapping as quickly as the man ahead of her, Stephen Lindsay, with his PR6, with its 1500cc engine, who leads the invitation class. And there is Stephen Lindsay, who accelerates now out upon the curve, up over the timing line. Just wonder whether he's catching those ahead of him. Uh, yes, he is on that lap. He's about four tenths quicker than Richard Stables. So here is Stephen Lindsay, brakes for Hatchet's hairpin. For the moment, he's on his own, but he is, as I say, chipping away and just getting a little closer to the cars ahead. Richard Stables, the next target in number 95. There he is, look. So this is now the battle that's building up for fourth and fifth places. Eight tenths apart, they were at the start of the lap, and the gap coming down and down and down, corner by corner. Yeah, it's a very impressive drive, actually. Uh, not used to seeing him quite so far at the field, and certainly not used to seeing him uh, mixing it with other classes, faster than uh, uh, Rachel Davis, and uh, looks like faster than another class, uh, Richard Stables, just ahead of him, too. So he should be able to gain another place here. Overall, this will be for fourth and fifth places. Down they come, look towards that kink at Woodlands, nose to tail. They are both PR6s, but they're running different engines. That's why uh, they are in different classes. That's the invitation class leader there, number 59. The invitation class is cropping up in more and more categories these days just to bring more cars onto the grid, not to exclude anybody. Over the line now goes them, Stephen Lindsay, and the target, Richard Stables, ahead of him, who breaks now for Hatchet's hairpin. And the hotelier, who comes from Ross, accelerates now the black PR6 out of the corner. Stephen Lindsay tucked up behind him. We've had seven minutes of the race completed and Colin Miller driving off into the distance up front. Four seconds clear of Darren Luke with Mark Boot in third place. But this is the fight for fourth. Now Richard Stables starting to feel more and more pressure, isn't he? Because not that far behind him now in number 59. There, look, is Stephen Lindsay. So he's almost on the tail. Now he's starting to think about where he can make a move. This is one of the corners where uh, two different lines going in helps you uh, at different points through the corner and then out of the corner on the way out. And it looks like Lindsay's got a better run through it. He's on the inside line. It's flat out through this part of the circuit. There's side by side still going towards the final corner. And it's Lindsay now ahead of Stables, a brave move through a flat out right hander at Woodlands. He's done it. He's gone through then. So up to fourth, leading his class, of course, Steve Lindsay down to fifth is Richard Stables. And Lindsay released from behind the black PR6 there, starts to pull away, but he locks up going into the hairpin. Is that going to compromise him? Let's see. He almost ran a bit wide, but he's managed to survive from that. So Stephen Lindsay up to fourth place overall now, and he threads his way from Spitfires through Debeni and then on up towards the Senna S's. The new fourth place man that you're looking at, Stephen Lindsay ahead there for Richard Stables, chasing after Mark Boot. Out of the Brooklyn's hairpin comes Stephen Lindsay. He's in fourth position, and the next target is Mark Boot. Now, last time around, they were lapping with Boot quicker than Lindsay. However, in terms of their best lap time, Stephen Lindsay has lapped quicker than Mark Boot, and therefore there is a chance yet that we can get him up into the top three overall. Yeah, exactly, and uh, this is uh, reasonably spread out for a radical race. They are normally a lot closer than this, and it's uh, obviously taking its toll from four races during the weekend. But the man on the move is, is Stephen Lindsay at the moment. And uh, over that last lap, yes, took another half second out of Mark Boot. Uh, in fact, he was, uh, yes, he was third fastest over the lap, looking further down. It's all sort of status quo, as it were. Although um, a mover in seventh spot, uh, this 22 car there as well. Yeah, that's Gary Baxter up from electing to start a gate at the very back of the grid this time, as he did in the earlier race today. Well, there is Stephen Lindsay. This is the Brooklyn's hairpin through which he turns out of the right-hander, and then rides all over the curb there, using as much width as he possibly can to maintain the momentum of the car down into this right-hander of Woodlands. He's pulling away, of course, from Richard Stables. And behind Richard Stables, you can see number five there creeping into the picture, Rachel Davis. Now, she's not lapping yet as quickly as Richard, or at least last time she wasn't, but now I would suggest that gap has come down almost as though having lost a place. A bit of the fire has gone out of Richard Stables' drive. Let's see, over the line he goes and Rachel Davis is only a tenth quicker, but quicker she is. So the gap's down slightly. She breaks very, very late going into the hairpin. 
locks up a little bit, scrabbles through the corner. Just about hooked up the apex, very, very marginal though, left her break for the last second, still pushing on, even after four races, desperate to move up through the field. And a pretty conventional line. It's amazing, we've seen her on board with the minis and on board with the, um, the uh, Sports Max, and we didn't think there was any bumps in the circuit, but all of a sudden, these really stiff cars are being pressed to the ground. Any small bump feels massive when you're sitting uh, very, very close to the ground. The radical concept that was created in the late 1990s by Mick Hyde and Phil Abbott, who were regular racers in sports cars with the 750 Motor Club, and what they didn't have, they thought, was a category in which they could go racing very, very quickly for a relative lack of money. And so they thought, well, if nothing exists, we're going to create something. And so the Radical was born with the 1100cc Kawasaki engine. Uh, Phil Abbott, the engineer, created it. Mick Hyde is a marketing expert. He had a marketing and PR company in Stockport in Greater Manchester. He was the man behind really driving the Radical message home. And it started off as a class within a race in the 750 Motor Club portfolio. Then it was able to become a championship standing on its own two feet. We had the club sport, we had the pro sport, we've had lots more categories since. And of course, Radical has gone on to build cars to race in the Le Mans 24 hours, for example. The battle for sixth place you're looking at between Rachel Davis and then class opposition in the person of Gary Baxter. There, number 22, Gary, I fear, has a clutch or gearbox problem with this car because for the second race in a row, he elected to start at the back of the grid rather than mid-grid. So as he comes now out of Woodlands down towards Honda Curve, the car he's chasing is out of Rachel Davis. This is the view looking back from Rachel's car now. And you can see tucked up behind is Gary Baxter. They're battling for sixth and seventh places. As now in and amongst the traffic is Mark Boot, who is being reeled in by this man using the curb, Stephen Lindsay. He's got to get himself past the back marker here. And when he has done so, then the next target is Mark Boot. He's lapping quicker than Boot in real terms. Here is the battle now for sixth place. Rachel Davis under real pressure from Gary Baxter. You can barely see Gary's car. It's hidden behind the rear wing, but we know he's there and he's very, very close. Yeah, and he's also been just uh, about a half a second faster, his best lap time. Uh, than Rachel Davis throughout this particular race. We haven't seen too much of um, Gary at the very top end of uh, these racing this year. Um, Rachel has been there and thereabouts, sort of sniffing a race win, and actually at Alton Park she was leading the race for about four corners after a restart and then had a, a problem with the car and uh, had a DNF, a heartbreaking moment because uh, it would have been a breakthrough win for her um, and now she's under pressure from Gary Baxter and Baxter just needs to find a way past. We know it's reasonably difficult to uh, overtake around Pembury in uh, the other classes. It's even worse in a radical when you're desperately looking for that downforce going around those very quick corners at Woodlands and Honda. Here he comes on the inside. Rachel with a couple of third places to her name this year. Defends, turning through Hatchet. Sprints now out of the corner up towards Spitfire. Speed building. And this is a hard part of the circuit on which to overtake because really there's only one line through this next sequence. You've got to start now, though, to plan a move ready for the Brooklyn's hairpin. But Rachel Davis, second in class, sixth overall, being chased by Gary Baxter and seven minutes of the race remaining. Again, it's a race that is timed rather than a set number of laps. So, usual format, check and flag goes out the first time the race leader crosses the line once, 20 minutes are up. That race leader is Colin Miller. And here are second and third in the same class that he races in, the SR3 class. And Gary Baxter up from the rear of the grid, don't forget. Now right there under the rear wing of Rachel Davis's car. So he's done the hard work of overtaking others and catching, but now life is becoming a bit more difficult. Yeah, now it's uh, less driving and more thinking about what he can do because uh, he will be being slightly held up, only by a sort of couple of tenths of a second, but uh, a little bit of brain power as to how he's going to get past. And Rachel sort of thinking about defending, but is he, she going to get uh, dive down the inside? There is the front nose, very, very close to the rear uh, wheel of Rachel, but not quite this time through. Maybe next lap, he can have a go. Very, very close, wasn't it? But again, you can see what Gary Baxter was planning. He started to move two or three corners before and then had all the momentum to challenge going down towards the headpin. Now, this is the fight for third and fourth places because Mark Boot has now been caught by Stephen Lindsay. At the start of this lap, there was half a second between them. And there, in fourth place, is Stephen Lindsay. Now, same sort of car, but different engines, therefore different classes. Mark Boot's car is one of the, if you like, genuine PR6s with the standard 1340cc engine. Behind him is the slightly hybrid version with a 1500cc Powertech engine, and that is Stephen Lindsay's white car that runs wide, coming out of Honda Curve. You can see the way there that the runoff area is pushed back. There's a bit more tarmac on the outside of the road, but even so, drivers are still caught out by that quick corner. Down to the braking zone, they come for the hairpin. When they cross the line, the gap was down from half to three tenths of a second, and sideways, Mark Boot then, as he came out of the hairpin, that compromises run up towards Spitfires, and it means that Stephen Lindsay is even closer still. This was the sort of situation in the last race where uh, 
all of a sudden Mark Boone started to um, do some pirouettes under pressure from Richard Stables and now under pressure from Lindsay and he uh, nearly did the same thing coming out of the hairpin full throttle to try and desperately get away from the white car and his mirrors and it just made the rear end step out of it again he makes a mistake under braking this time for Brooklyn's hairpin and that will jeopardize him through Woodlands through Honda Curve all the way down to the hairpin at the first corner hatchets and this could be where the move's made yes dare one say Boot lost his footing a bit there because the car seemed to slide a bit he comes into Honda Curve now and Stephen Lindsay tucked up behind him tries now to get a good exit from the right hander is he near enough as they go across the line no he's about four tenths of a second back so he's not going to be able to challenge at the hairpin unless Mark Boot makes a mistake and we've seen that he can make them occasionally out of the hairpin he comes Stephen Lindsay looks to get the power down better though yeah that time through it was uh, it was less erratic from Mark Boot but still uh, Lindsay had a better exit and uh, Mark was sort of in the middle of the road maybe slightly defending but wasn't quite sure and didn't have a full racing line whereas Lindsay was nice and sweeping to keep taking the, the uh, line of least resistance and therefore slightly faster but there's one thing being fast there's another thing passing Absolutely right, and so Stephen Lindsay is almost there, and again Mark Boot gets a little bit crossed up as he turns into the hairpin. I'm afraid now he's looking increasingly ragged, isn't he? He's feeling the pressure, he's also feeling the effects of uh, three races already over the course of a very hot and long weekend at Pembroke. Can he resist much longer? He's in third place and we've got just under four minutes of the race to go. Boot comes up over the line. Lindsay using more of the road behind him, trying to get a quicker run out upon the curve over the line. The gap is still 0.4 of a second though, and Mark Boot tries to defend as they come to the hairpin. Stephen Lindsay is, as they say, there or thereabouts. And a sideways boot once again. by me, he's living dangerously. He doesn't need to defend, though, because uh, Lindsay wasn't on the attack. He was just sort of middle of the road, and that's why he's spinning up the rear wheels, because he's not getting a, a, a nice enough entrance into the corner. Uh, but he's obviously very concerned. His, his head is moving around, looking in the mirrors all the time. And it's only pride at stake here, because they're in different classes anyway. So uh, Mark Boot is determined to hang on to his third place, and he's got to do so for just over three minutes. Again, the car is sideways at the Brooklyn's hairpin. Great to watch this, Mark, but it's not necessarily the best line around the circuit. But you keep it up because we're enjoying watching this. So Mark Boot in the black car is third. Here he comes out of the kink at Woodlands, down now to Honda Curve. Actually, he's managed to see off Stephen Lindsay on this lap. Maybe Stephen's been a bit frightened in the submission here, wondering which way Mark Boot's going to go next because the gap really has widened up from four tenths to over a second at the end of that lap. Yeah, and again, he checks his mirrors. Who was the slower of the two drivers? It was Lindsay. He just uh, dropped off the pace that lap. So potentially we didn't see it with the camera view that we had. Maybe he made a little mistake and that was just enough to drop, uh, drop that gap down. But with uh, two and a half minutes remaining, I wonder if that's it for this battle. It was entertaining while it lasts, but Mark can start concentrating on going forwards and the road ahead rather than his mirrors and his head twitching from left to right. But yet again, they're going into the corner. Who's behind him? Where is he? Well, he's nowhere near you, Mark. So focus on the, uh, the road ahead and uh, let's finish this race safely. Well, it's up to the next corner where he's made errors in the past. That's Richard Stables, who is currently in fifth place. A bit lonely now, everybody else having Scarpa ahead of him. We've got two more minutes to go. In case you've forgotten, Colin Miller, the race leader, still dominates. We've not seen much of Colin for a while, but he's in a virtual different race of his own now. So far ahead, is he? And second and third and fourth come across the line now. Darren Luke second, Mark Boot third, the white car, Stephen Lindsay fourth. 13 seconds is the gap between the top two with just under two minutes to go. Now, there is Mark Boot. This is the Hatchets hairpin. Not always a happy combination. Again, a little bit sideways there, but to be fair to Mark, he's not had a spin, whereas he had a couple in the earlier race, but again, he's on the edge, isn't he? The car looks so, so ragged. Very, very twitchy. And he only actually lost a tenth of a second to Lindsay that last time through. Um, but in those two corners, I suspect he lost a bit more than that. Oh, just breaking away as he was trying to get the power down and then over these bumps and uh, it's just a characteristic of Mark Booth. There is our leader Colin Miller having a very lonely race but this is what he needs. And two more laps to run I would suggest he comes across the line now with a minute and 16 seconds he's going to squeeze out this and one more I would imagine now looking at the lap time so he goes through the very experienced radical racer he's raced them in Ireland and now he has been very successful with them on the mainland this year he comes up through Spitfires so Colin Miller dominating this race the question for Diana I suppose in a sense is for him to explain to her what happened in race three because that was just the one chink in the armor all weekend he looked dominant in race one and race two and now in race four but race three just never really gelled for him comes out of the essence up towards the Brooklyn's hairpin in second place still is Darren Luke who is going to maintain his unbeaten run within the PR6 class if all goes according to his plan but there's the leader making his way 
from the Brooklyn's hairpin, now down towards the kink at Woodlands, and on now through the approach to Honda Curve. And when he comes across the line, there will be round about 20 seconds still to go. So he should get the last lap board. He should get one more lap out of the race. Here he comes. There's the board. So one more lap for Colin Miller to run here at Pembroke. The circuit 1.45 miles, and he's got traffic ahead where Paul Marsham, first of all, is trying to negotiate one of the club sports. And Colin Miller has got to negotiate them both, but he's got 13.6 seconds in hand, so he can afford here to bide his time. Yes, I suspect he backs off quite a bit. Actually, his pace is still pretty good. He's only a down second from his best lap time. And I think if I was him, I'd be dropping off a lot more than that, especially with that mark is getting in the way like that. Uh, it's uh, not so worrying if he's being held up by them. It's more worrying if they do erratic behaviour and knock him off, which has been uh, a feature and, and what happens quite a lot in Radical Cup classes. The class battles get in the way of the main battles. And you do have drivers of differing amounts of experience, don't you? Different levels of experience. So Colin Miller, who's one of the more experienced drivers, he's got Simon Garmston, another, uh, shall we say, stalwart Radical racer ahead, who's a lap adrift already. But there, Colin Miller comes out of Honda Curve and slows seemingly as he comes up towards the chequered flag, but he can afford to because that's a dominant win over the line goes Colin Miller. That lap was a 59 second lap, so he was about four seconds slower than his own best. But Colin Miller scores a third win of the weekend here. Three out of four of the weekend is not bad going, is it? Darren Luke second then and maintains this 100% win rate within the PR6 class. And Mark Boot was able to hang on to third ahead of Stephen Lindsay. That's Richard Stables just coming through for fifth and sixth to Gary Baxter. Rachel Davis having dropped a long way back over the last few laps. Here she is now coming over the line in a rather distant seventh place. Just wonder whether she had a moment somewhere. Well, there is the Irish driver, victorious, and it means that Colin Miller has a third victory of the weekend, and he has now a fourth overall win and an eighth class win of the season. It is being a very good year for Colin Miller. Well, he's worked hard for that, and it's been a very busy weekend for the Radical Racers, hasn't it? Because this is a circuit that's relatively short in length, but it's a fast circuit, and it's one that does require quite a lot of attention. Yeah, a lot of strength from the drivers, uh, especially in this heat. It'll be interesting to see just how uh, Colin, who's uh, not a small man, uh, will have uh, coped with the, the temperatures and the physical nature of the track. Certainly some of the more slender drivers will have really taken a battering. And as we saw, the car thing bounced around all over the place. Here are the results. Colin Miller then, the winner from Darren Luke and Mark Boot in third place. Stephen Lindsay winning his class in fourth. Richard Stables fifth and Gary Baxter in sixth. Colin Miller, the best of the SR3 drivers. Darren Luke winning the Pro 6 class. Stephen Lindsay, the invitation class. And we also had a class win from Graham Ridgway in the club sports way, way down in 12th overall. Down the pit lane then come the cars at the end of the fourth race of the weekend in the Quaife Radical Club Cup. And there is a man who's taken three wins this weekend outright. He has also, bear in mind, uh, taken now four class wins this weekend. It's Colin Miller and it has been another very successful trip across from Antrim for him. He uh, levers himself out of the car, but very shortly, once he's put his crash helmet off and no doubt taken on board some liquid, we'll be able to hear from uh, Colin. As I say, it's been a very successful visit to Pembrey for him. And Crash Helmet comes off, Hans Device comes off, Balaclava is next, and they're ready to have a word yeah. is Diana Binks. Thanks, David. Yes, I am uh, just about to, to have a, a word with you. Many congratulations. It's been a pretty busy weekend and quite a successful weekend, this one. Yeah, this is uh, three out of four now, so yeah, quite happy with the whole weekend, seeing as I've never been here before. So just on for you know, the last race there, I had no grip. I just don't know what happened. The tyres must have gone off. but. Uh, a few wee tweaks to the car and we're back at the front again. Quite physical? Uh, well, it's quite warm out there, so uh, it's probably not as physical in the SR3 as it is in the PR6, so uh, I would imagine Darren was working harder. So worth the trip over? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, these cars look spectacular out there on the, on the circuit. Are they as much fun as and much of a challenge as they look? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I don't think pound for pound you'll get anything that'll go as fast or as handle as well as what any of these radicals do. They're absolutely fabulous. OK, well, well done. Thank you. So Colin Miller, the winner in the end by just under 11 seconds. And now we get the answer to what happened for him in the earlier race when he was struggling for traction. Well, no such dramas there then. A win for Colin Miller. 
and then Darren Luke second and Mark Boot in third place. We've still got some great racing to look forward to here. We've got the Autosport Young Guns, we've got the BMW CSL Cup, and one of the more eclectic mixes of cars coming up next, the Welsh Sports and Saloons. So join us for that here after the break.